Are you suffering from long-term brain fog and chronic fatigue, where each day just feels like a struggle to survive? And every time you go look for help, the doctors just say that your blood work looks fine. Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you the lab test that your conventional doctor is not recommending so that you can uncover the root cause of your brain fog and chronic fatigue, stop masking symptoms, and start recovering for good. Hi, I'm David, and I help people reclaim their lives from chronic fatigue, brain fog, and low self-esteem. Today I'm coming to you from Tulum, Mexico, where I'm on a brief trip. Um, so it's a very, it's kind of a fun place to shoot a video um, in, my, in, in my friend's backyard. So um, today's video is near and dear to my heart. This is the exact place that I found myself in, um, in the beginning of my journey. I felt helpless, isolated, um, and, and just really um, helpless in the sense that I was getting no um, sympathy or answers from anyone in my life, whether it be doctors, my family, friends. Um, it was one of the darkest moments in my life was having to build any brain fog and chronic fatigue and not knowing what to do about it. I went to countless doctors for two years trying to figure out what was wrong with me, um, how I could repair it, and all I got were you know, big insurance bills, um, which elicited even more anxiety and no answers. So um, as a preface to this, I am not a medical doctor. However, um, I am someone who has gone on this journey. I am an integrative health practitioner who is certified by IHP, and I'm gonna be offering some friendly tips and from a natural health perspective on how you can start to find out the root cause of your chronic fatigue and brain fog. So why aren't your conventional doctor's labs or your blood work identifying the root causes for your chronic chronic fatigue and brain fog. Well, these labs are designed to treat, to identify and treat dis-ease in the body. And so specifically diseases that can be uh, prescribed medications or surgery. And so, and these medications or surgery are, you know, kind of aligning with the agenda of pharmaceutical companies, as well as the insurance companies that define uh, what qualifies as a disease. So. Um, if you don't neatly fit into these categories or if you have a condition which is as a result of an imbalance fundamentally in your body systems like the limbic system or the nervous system well these don't really point to specific diseases that can then be treated with pharmaceuticals or surgery so they're not going to be identified because that's not even what they're looking for second reason why um, your conventional medicine blood work is not going to find the root cause of your chronic fatigue and brain fog is because blood work is very limited in its ability to capture um, root cause imbalances. So blood is a homeostatic fluid, meaning that it takes away nutrients from the organs, bones, and anywhere else in order to maintain a state of balance. So if your blood, if you're running out of a certain nutrient in the blood, it's going to go and find it elsewhere in the body. So your um, cholesterol, homocysteine, um, TSH is going to appear pretty normal in your blood work up until the point where you know you've reached a pretty severe imbalance then it, then you're going to notice it in your blood work um, but in the meantime you will not so that's part of the reason why your blood work may look fine but you don't feel fine and then lastly the uh, normal ranges that are put in conventional labs um, don't really mean you're healthy they just mean that you don't qualify for the label of having a disease so for example um, you know t tsh levels or um, thyroid stimulating hormone levels um, that are in range don't mean that you have a healthy thyroid, they just mean that you don't qualify um, for hypothyroidism, which is completely different. It means you're not sick, it doesn't mean that you're healthy. All right, so the first test is gonna be the hair tissue mineral analysis test. And what this is gonna measure is the degree to which you are depleted of minerals, electrolytes, and if you have elevated toxic heavy metals in your body. So this is gonna measure a slew of things, but um, you know, it's also going to measure the ratios of them. So I'll give you some examples. So it'll measure um, selenium, chromium, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, copper, and zinc. And so how does this relate to brain fog? So um, copper and zinc, as an example, you not only need adequate levels of each, but they need to be in balance with one another. If you have too much copper, you're going to have ADD, you're going to have fatigue, you're going to have brain fog. Um, and other kind of behavioral disorders. If your zinc is low, you're gonna have trouble producing particularly testosterone, so you're going to pretty, feel pretty sluggish. If your selenium is not high enough, 
you're not going to be producing enough um, thyroid hormones. So um, that's like a topic for another video, but basically your thyroid function is going to be compromised. Um, for, for example, chromium, that's going to be related to uh, blood sugar. Is your blood sugar going to be stable? Phosphorus, are you breaking down proteins enough? And then, of course, heavy metals, which, um, you know, there's so much information on this, but conventional doctors are not looking at um, elevated heavy metals. And so where there's heavy metals in so many of our personal care products and in our environment, and we are completely unaware of it. And so if you have elevated heavy metals, um, that is undoubtedly going to be a contributing factor to your brain fog. So you need to look at that. Hey, if you're getting value from this video, hit that like button and remember to subscribe to my channel for more content on how to recover from brain fog, chronic fatigue, and low self-esteem. All right, back to the episode. So the second test is going to be the um, vitamins, candida, and metabolic function tests. What this is going to look at is, uh, first of all, fungal overgrowth, which is going to be indicative of candida overgrowth, um, nutrient absorption issues, so malabsorption, um, intestinal, intestinal permeability, and much, much more. And so this is going to start to give us an idea of, are you able to produce uh, neurotransmitters? Can you absorb nutrients from the food you eat? And uh, that'll kind of give us a strong idea of what's going on internally because you're gonna have to correct that as well um, beyond just taking some supplements. Also gonna look at um, your um, vitamin levels. So looking at you know, your B vitamins, CoQ10, endocytocysteine, and much, much more. And then that'll, that combined with your minerals is gonna really give us an idea of how to treat deficiencies from a functional medicine perspective. So we're, you'll be able to make you know, nutrition, supplement and then lifestyle decisions and you may even you may even need to undergo some protocols in order to correct for example candida overgrowth um, in order to balance all of your systems and i would just add that if you can only do two lab tests i would say that um, the hair tissue mineral analysis and um, the candida vitamin and metabolic function tests are probably the two that you want to go with they're going to give you the um, juiciest amount of information to work with as a starting point to getting well Okay, so next up um, is gonna be a food sensitivity test. So you've probably been tested by your primary care physician for um, food sensitivities using immunoglobin E food sensitivities, which are food sensitivities that happen within minutes or hours of eating a food. So with this test, you're actually gonna be testing for delayed or latent food sensitivities. So that means you could eat something on Saturday and then um, feel the effects of it on Tuesday. It sounds kind of crazy, right? And so this is called immunoglobin G food sensitivities. And so this is gonna uncover the things that you need to remove from your diet, um, as well as um, just kind of starting to uncover what's contributing to the levels of inflammation, what's inflaming your gut. You might have high C-reactive proteins, et cetera. And so um, uncovering these food sensitivities is gonna be really critical um, as you start to heal the other systems in your body. You don't wanna tax it with additional sources of inflammation like foods that you really shouldn't be eating. And the last test is gonna be the thyroid adrenal hormone test. So by the time uh, you have chronic fatigue, long-term brain fog, mood disorders, etc., your hormones are already out of whack. They've, gotten, they've gotten, become very dysfunctional. So what this test is gonna look like, it's gonna go way beyond your conventional med, uh, medicine test of just looking at TSH um, and just your test free testosterone levels. Um, what this is gonna show is you know, the antibodies for Hashimoto. So are you having an autoimmune response? Um, hemoglobin A1C, are you processing sugar correctly? Um, actually, understanding hemoglobin A1C is really critical if you have some stubborn weight that you can't let go of. Um, estrogen progesterone levels, free testosterone levels, vitamin D, which is not a vitamin, actually, it's a steroid hormone, and um, it's really critical to balancing your hormones, and much, much more. And so here, you're gonna start to look at cortisol as well, um, so balancing your cortisol levels throughout the day. So if you're kind of in a tired and wired state, so when I had um, chronic uh, fatigue and brain fog, I would you know, wake up really tired, but then I'd get a second wind in the evening. My cortisol levels were actually reversed. And so I thought I was a night owl at the time. Um, actually, I just had a reverse cortisol curve or a dysfunctional uh, cortisol curve. And so this is gonna kind of give you some information specifically around um, lifestyle choices that you can make and how you can balance your hormones and then also inform some dietary choices as well. I wish I had had this option earlier on in my journey. I was given one option, and that was to do blood work, and when that didn't work, to do more blood work, and when that didn't work, go to a specialist, and then the specialist in the end would tell me it was in my head. 
Well, I'm here to tell you this is not in your head and you deserve to find out the root cause of your chronic fatigue and brain fog. It wasn't in my head when I could barely wake up every morning. It wasn't in my head when even when I wanted to, I couldn't be present for my friends and family. It wasn't in my head that I had to take naps after work just to get through the day. It wasn't in my head when I'd break down in tears because I wanted to concentrate and learn something so badly, but I just couldn't focus because my mind wasn't there. It wasn't in my head when I had to take six weeks off of work because I no longer could even show up and be present and felt like a complete zombie. So, um, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to kind of share my solidarity and empathy with you in where you are in this journey right now and that there's hope and that you deserve to find out the truth and to get better. So I, I left links to the labs in the description below. I encourage you to research them further, understand what is being offered, and if you're ready to really understand your bioindividuality, go ahead and purchase them or work with your naturopath to do labs that measure the same thing. Um, if you got value from this video and you'd like more content on how to optimize your mind, body, and emotions to reclaim your life from brain fog and chronic fatigue, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. So with that, I wanna wish you all health, happiness, and self-love as you move through this journey. If you have any comments, any questions, anything else that you'd like me to cover, um, please leave them in the comment below. I hope to continuously be of service to you, and I will see you in the next episode. Peace.